Well, 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 it's finally here. The Flash video on my channel is my second Science Band Superheroes video, and it is still the most popular, getting more views and comments literally every day. Because of the influx of comments that keep coming in, the video gets a lot of questions, but by far, I think the most common is about the suit. See, in the video, I discuss how super speed could potentially be harmful to a human body, exposing it to particles that would rip it apart if it were going too fast against them. I elaborate on the possible effects of that in my previous video on the Black Flash, if you'd like to know a little bit more. Despite that point, a lot of people have been asking, what if you had a way to prevent this? What if there was a suit that could save the human body from harm when using theoretical super speed? Is this sort of suit even possible? So, finally, here we are. This is the official part two of Could You Become the Flash? Science Behind the Flash To find out if a speedster could protect themselves from harm, we need to recap what exactly harms someone in such a scenario. Imagine using super speed without protection like driving a car with no physical makeup. It's exactly like being shot forward at intense speeds with nothing to stop whatever is coming at you. Most of what would be coming at you is particles and molecules in the air. Depending on your speed, these particles could actually begin to damage your body. Once you'd reach a certain high speed, the particles and molecules could actually begin to tear your body apart. This phenomenon is a result of Newton's third law of motion. Newton's third law of motion states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite opposite reaction. What this means, in simpler terms, is that when object A exerts any kind of force upon object B, object B actually exerts an equal amount of force upon object A. How this works with super speed is that the speedster, when running against the particles and molecules in the air, is exerting force on them as they run against them. In accordance with Newton's third law of motion, the particles and molecules push back with an equal amount of force. The faster you run, the more likely you are to be hurt by these particles and molecules. This led me to say that, if one were to theoretically obtain super speed, it could only work for short bursts, or would have to be not used to its full extent. However, there was one detail that had been somewhat overlooked. Remember that non-existent car I mentioned earlier? What if that was just an actual physical car? Here, next time you're in a car, hang your arm out the window for a sec and you notice that it's much different being outside the car when it's moving than being inside the car when it's moving. This is because the car allows you to sit inside a controlled environment within it. Since the car's exterior is blocking all the force coming at you from the outside, the inside is completely calm and different. The car acts like how the Flash's suit would have to work to protect him from speed-related harm. In that sense, protecting yourself as a speedster is actually a simple concept. At least, it is on paper. There's a few extra details that are actually pretty important, and without them, one might not be able to even survive the suit. The big issue surrounding the suit is, what would it be made out of? A lot of people point to the Flash's friction-proof suit in the CW show, but as far as I can tell, that's just comic book science. It's a cool concept, but such a material does not seem to readily exist. Or maybe it does. On the CW, the Flash's suit might be made out of a material called Nextel. I won't exactly cover that today, and I'll explain why in a second, but you can read all about it here, and I highly recommend you do. The reason I don't think the Nextel suit would work is because, quite frankly, it doesn't cover Barry's entire body, and it wouldn't be able to if it was somewhat skin-tight as shown on the show. Barry would suffocate inside the suit if it did cover his whole body. So what would the most efficient flash suit need to be built out of? Well, take a look at this. Let's say we have a tornado or a hurricane coming through the area. High winds are present, winds strong enough to take down houses. How do we protect our buildings? We use certain materials to combat the ripping and tearing effects of these high winds, materials like concrete. What makes these materials so wind resistant is their density. The denser the material is, the more resistant it will be to high winds. In this case, the dense material is the suit, whatever is inside it is the human body, and the high winds are the pushing effects of that body using super speed to run against the surrounding air environment. So we know the suit would, practically, need to be a super dense material to be able to protect the body efficiently. But before we identify what the suit could be made out of, we need to cover the other issues this material could bring the speedster in question's body. The material would not only need to protect the body from speed-related harm, but the body would need to be protected from the material. Something dense enough to block the environmental harm could also potentially damage the body as the air pushes it closer to it. Another issue would be weight. The weight of this super dense material could be a drag to a speedster's energy. Although I discussed in the first Flash video how a speedster's body could, in theory, be producing constant energy faster than the average human, allowing for an infinite energy source within them, this doesn't mean that all the energy is accessible at once. What I meant by infinite energy was that getting any kind of fatigue wouldn't really be much of a problem, at least not compared to us. A speedster 
could push their physical limits much more than any normal human could. However, the bodily process of producing energy is just that, a process. At some point, a speedster could use up their energy and need to wait for their body to catch up with them. If the suit they're wearing is heavy, say concrete level heavy, it wouldn't take very long for that energy to run out, making their super speed far less efficient. Although all these issues seem like a bit much, there does seem to be material that can fix all these issues, and could, very well, be what a speedster suit would need to be made out of. Allow me to introduce to you Micro Lattice. Micro Lattice is a material that was unveiled in October of 2015, and is currently being developed to build lighter aircraft and other utilities. It has a plethora of awesome properties, but the ones we need to know are that it is one of the lightest materials mankind has ever developed, as you can see here, it can sit on a dandelion and not damage it, it can be molded and shaped very easily, and its strength is on the level of titanium. Imagine you have a suit comprised of micro lattice. It solves nearly all the problems. The light weight of the suit would instantly fix the weight issue, allowing for super speed to be reached without spending too much energy. Its ability to be so easily molded could aid with the way it interacts with the air pushing against it. Depending on how the suit is shaped, the micro lattice could let the air brush off it, not unlike the wing of a plane, and efficiently prevent secondhand damage to the human body. Of course, you might still need a padded undersuit, like you see here, just for good measure. Finally, however, we come to the strength of Micro Lattice. Micro Lattice is being used to build lighter and more efficient aircraft, meaning it is a very strong material. The company responsible for the material, Boeing, even claimed that it was as strong as titanium. Titanium, as a material, has more strength and density than concrete, the material used often to protect areas and people from tornadoes and hurricanes. Imagine wearing a suit of lightweight, moldable material that could prevent you from damage better than a slab of solid concrete. Wow. Of course, it would need to cover your whole body, but that could be done fairly easily with the material. Since it's metallic and therefore not skin tight, a series of well-placed, extremely small holes could allow breathing oxygen to pass into the body without harming it. So, in the end, it is possible to build a suit that would protect you from super speed related harm if you were a speedster. It would be light, moldable, and stronger than you could have ever hoped for. There are still a lot of problems that come from theoretical super speed, but as far as we can see, this suit's got you covered.